Here we are again, ladies and gentlemen. It is a punter's guide and a big one as well. Some brilliant racing to look forward to this weekend. You can see Joel is alongside as always, and Frankie's on his travels once again because it's the Hong Kong International Races, which we're not going to lock out. We're going to stick an entry in sand down, but he's in a nice posh Sky Rise Hotel. Again, you're making a bit of a regular occurrence, this Frankie. It's not bad, is it? For the for the benefit of the viewers who can see me, not just who can hear me. I am in a on the harbour in a sky rise. It's quality. I'm a bit, if I'm honest, not that I'm moaning. I'm slightly jet lagged, slightly hungover, but it's a good trip. Uh, Happy Valley. If you ever get the chance to go racing in Happy Valley, uh, it's it's like nothing else. It's probably got to be the coolest race course in the world. So Shartin will be good, top class horses, but Happy Valley for beers, music, fireworks, racing in the city, it's got to be on the bucket list. Yeah, for those that saw Spotify, by the way, he's in, he's in the back street. It's an absolute dump. Uh, what do we do wrong, John? What did we go wrong for us? Well, I was going to go to Haydock, but that was abandoned. Um, I didn't fancy Wolverhampton. But, uh, you know, me, you and Matt, if we want to buy uh, some five furlong um, off-cast from uh, Dave Evans, get it over to Hong Kong and we'll live the lifestyle like Frankie. Prize money's good. Uh, did you get to see, like, Joe Moreira and uh, Zach Purton and uh, Vincent Ho and all those? Did you, were you hanging out with all the top jobs? Yeah. Yeah, 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 all in good form. Um, Vincent Hill, I spoke to him when he, when he won the IJC. He's always very level-headed, doesn't <laughs> doesn't get too excited. First thing he said is, I'm focused on Sunday when he just won a Wednesday night. Um, Zach was in pretty good form because I think he had a bad book of rides but did well. Um, yeah, it's very cool. I mean, everyone's on tour really, aren't they? By the ones that live here, so everyone's in a good mood. It makes life a lot easier. Just I just, I, I'd love to say... No, I was just going to say thanks so much for all the tips that you got. Apparently, Matthew Chadwick is the guy out there. He's brilliant, he's brilliant for tips. Uh, the WhatsApp has never started. It's, you know, people say, he's never stopped. But thanks for all those massive tips out there. Talking to all the jocks. Don't fancy this. Really fancy this. We got one first time out. Not any of that. So you can stick your bumper horse up your you-know-what today. <laughs> Joel, yeah. nap of the weekend. It's going to run on Sunday at Shout In. We'll get See you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> he's not anyway enough of all that nonsense let's look ahead to the action this weekend then and frankie can uh, indulge everybody else about his stint over in hong kong because there's more serious stuff on these shows at ancient sand and you can see here's here on youtube please subscribe and like us, and then you'll get notified of whenever there is a new episode that includes a road to Cheltenham on a monday that we do as well and of course the punter's guide on a friday and you can listen to us now on spotify but you won't get to see frankie in all his glory backdrop i meant glorious backdrop right let's look into the action then we're going to start with stand down this should be really easy it's the 115 it's the fighting fifth rearranged from newcastle it shouldn't take us long frankie foster i wonder what you're going for <laughs> he's gonna run his knee surely constitution hill don't get what the whole hoo-ha about him not if it was going heavy because he won at Sandown on heavy ground the race before he went and did what he did in the Supreme. So I know that um, they did say if it goes heavy, he won't run, but that never really made much sense to me. So fingers crossed he does. But as I've been saying, it's all about love and boy, and she will like heavy ground. Um, I'm really interested to see the difference between love and boy and you wear it well, because they're both Mayor's novice winners. I think the love and boy form from last year, stepping out of novice company is a lot better than what the novices um, of last year will get to this year, as I keep banging on about in the Mayor's Huddle at the festival. So I'm actually looking forward to seeing Constitution Hill if he runs, but, but mostly what Le Bon Boy does and the difference, hopefully, between her and the other Mayor. Hey, well, Joel, that took a bit longer than I thought. So Frankie says the favourite runs, it wins. If it doesn't, the second favourite wins. Uh, and if neither of those run, it's going to be Shishkin to beat Goshen. Uh, they both turn around at the start, miss 40 lengths. <laughs> oh, do you know what? How could you let Shishkin go off a price like this? I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. No, it's against uh, Constitution Hill and whatever. Um, but would it really surprise us if Shishkin just put in the performance of his life? Uh, it, I mean, it doesn't look that way, does it? On, on paper. Um, I'm, I'm already all in for Love Envoy, Love Envoy for Mare's Hurdle anywhere. Um, I, I've gone against Lossy Mouth, so um, I, I, I'd just love to see what she does in this. Uh, but Constitution Hill turns up and it wins as long as the going is not soft, heavy, soft, heavy. Uh, so yeah, it's it's one of those to watch. Um, but could you could you see right? And and I, and I hate to uh, pee on Frankie's Hong Kong parade here, but if Constitution Hill 
goes and it's really, really bottomless and heavy and dirty sort of Irish ground. Can you not just see Nico going, what? I'm, I'm saving it for another day. I'm trying to make this race exciting. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, it is one of them, isn't it? It is not its is a watching brief if Constitution Hill uh, turns up. We've got another one as well with a similar mould a little later on. We'll come to that shortly. But let's talk about the first, uh, the second grade one on the card. Then the heavy the eighth novices chase. Start with you this time, Joel. I do like JPR one. I think he's a big Arkle contender. You would have won at Cheltenham. He had loads left. He over jumped if anything at the last. So I'm with him. But quite confidence with the words from Gavin Sheen and the news about uh, Colonel Harry as well on the ground. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, I, I mean, a lot of these horses, are, are they going to go in the ground? I mean, I thought this was probably up there with an outstanding bet of the weekend. And I don't like tipping them short. Uh, we're on last time. And you know when you see a horse uh, on seat fall, miss the break, you know, on the flat or whatever, you think, I'll get my money back on that one next time out. Or it's a pig. This ain't a pig, uh, JP, uh, JPR1. Um, best horse in the race by a, while, by a mile. Get your money back on this one. Um I mean, look, is that, is that ICO in there? I, I hate calling horses a pig, but I, I, I can't get the source right, whatever. Um, and JPR1 beat it, what, 13 lengths? At, was it Newton Abbott? I know it's carrying probably more a stone more or whatever. Uh, I don't like that horse um, going through some of these. It's, it's, it's the best horse in the race. It's a keep it simple job. If you backed it at Cheltenham and went, oh my God, this time you're getting your money back. That's all I can say. Best horse in the race should and will win. Yeah, hopefully. I am hopeful as well. Because I think he's a big arc of contender. Should he get there in March? Uh, Frankie, what are you fancying in the 150? I was, uh, I was trying to keep it simple, like Joel just said, JPR1. And then I started looking at unexpected passes form and a bit more depth. And I wonder if he can finally win a race. I know he's been nobbins chasing about eight times, but... Behind really good horses, behind Stage Star, behind That's All Right Gino, who um, won a newbie last week, but beat Nappers Hill. He ran at ran Cheltenham in a handicap, now comes off of level weights. Two miles or, or one mile, seven and a half, um, and on soft ground. Both unexpected parties' best performances have come on soft ground. I wonder, is slightly overpriced, maybe? Um, I might be trying to be clever here, because as Joel said, you do get those horses that fall at the last or unsee or something happens and you say, I need to bat that next time because it would have won and it'll keep winning. And that might be the case, but I think unexpected party is overpriced. So I'm going to take a chance at around fours. Next party then, sticking with the skeletons. Right, this one might take a little bit longer to dissect. Here's a 225. It's a two-mile handicap hurdle. Impose Toi, who's very impressive at Cheltenham. I'll start with you this time, Frankie. Uh, I think you liked this one last time. I actually dotted up, didn't he? Yes, um, but there's another that I liked and didn't win. And so maybe I'm hoping to get that money back once again. But Spirit Danu for the Moor team. We have been saying this enough that the Moors weren't firing at the start of the year. And that is slowly starting to turn around. It was also first time out for the horse this season. He was also too keen. And I think, I'm hoping, um, I know beat nothing when he strung up those four wins, but just looked like a good horse. And I, I'm convinced that... Now having a run, if settling better, and with the Morphorn turning around, there's a lot that can sway this horse to put in a much better performance than when fourth at Cheltenham. And the winner of that race, the one that none of us can pronounce, Blue King Doro, um, has gone and won since, which you put up the other week, Matt. So I think there's a lot to like about being a beaten favourite fourth at Cheltenham because many things are in this horse's favour for him to improve from that run. So I'm going to take a chance on Spirit Dano. Nahulihim will ride, who's riding well as well at the moment, and takes off three of an already fair weight because he hasn't gone on and done anything this season yet. Yeah, and the more's in better form, as you, as you say. So yeah, Spirit Dano, an interesting one. I'll come to you, Job. I mean, there are a couple of other interesting ones. Apart, I'll keep one very well. Over track and trip last time out, Sean Bowen on board. And this Booksy de Epair as well, however you pronounce it. I in doing GCSE French for Venetia Williams who beat a skeleton hot pot on David Lingford. Thought they were interesting, but we've got Red Rookie here back over hurdles, and your old mate Langer done at a bigger price as well, Joel. I take it there's another day for him. I think there's another day for Langadan. Uh, Lorca Williams gets a spin round a couple of hundred quid. Um, uh, it's a bit too early in the year, isn't it? It's the turn of the year, around March time, I think we'll start to. Uh, you know, put the uh, put the big work into Langer Dan. Uh, I really like one in here. Um, is it Gilai Jaune? Um, it's the pipe horse, isn't it? For 
uh, Jack Tudor rides it. It's good horses. Um, last time at Ascot, should have won. It has been held up in most of its races. Um, and it always trades really short in running, maybe three, four out, because it absolutely cruises. It cruises. Now, I don't know, we've talked about bridle poses before. When the jock gets at it, he, he, I don't know if he, if he doesn't find as much or he's been given too much to do. And I did hear a stat about how many horses were making it from the, you know, from the front, going from the front. And it was hard to get from behind, especially at Newbury and Sandown. Um, and people have, have said about, is it something to do with the new whip rolls? Is it horses are being held so far back? You know, like a, like a Spencer sort of ride. You know, there's holding them up and there's, you know, holding them back in a, in a different county. When it works, it works. Uh, I'll be honest, I think last time at Ascot, should have won, uh, was held up too far back, in my opinion, who's never read a race horse in his life. Um, it, it was beaten by uh, Jim Coco, Harry Fries, and the Skeltner horse, uh, Favoir. Um, as, as long as it travels well, which it always does, and is a little bit closer to the pace. Not right up there, just a little bit closer. I think this is a, a cracking shot at about six or seven to one. Uh, Gilai Joan for David Pipe and uh, Jack Tudor. Interesting, yeah. A real competitive race. Lots of angles in then for that 225. I did say we had another similar race to the Fighting Fifth coming up, and it is the other grade one on the card. The Tingle Creek, who of course, John Bond. Do we see a Nicky Anderson short price favourite, Frankie? Are we keeping it simple? Or can Edward Stone... Uh, overturn that Cheltenham form and retain his Tingle Creek crown. Easy for me to say. I think it's an interesting race to watch, but it's a terrible race for punting. I'd imagine John Bond will win. Um, I think he's still getting better, John Bond, but you won't get many clues towards John Bond versus Al Fabiolo, I don't think, unless he does something freakish, but I think John Bond will win. Edwardstone it's quite fascinating because he's put in his best ever performance when winning the Tingle Creek last year and hasn't really been as good or, or anywhere near John Bond since. But can he close that gap round Sandown? And then Boot Hill we've been talking about steps out of handicapping and into um, a grade one. Quite fascinating to see how he gets on. So there's plenty to watch, but there's nothing to back because John Bond's one to three and should go and win. There we are. Simple, yeah. John Bond. But it is a good race to watch. I'll give you that, Joel. Do you concur? Uh, well, pretty pretty obvious what, what Frankie said. I think uh, if we, uh, three of us, own Boot Hill, uh, you've got to give him the chance. Uh, deserves it, but he's got to step up. Edward Stone, you know, I think he's come back to what he is, but how good is Edward Stone compared to John Bond? Uh, got the beating uh, of Edward Stone. Uh, Nube Negra, um, too soft for him. Um, I'm surprised Matt hasn't noticed the uh, jockey upgrade from Harry Skelton to John Joe O'Neill. Oh, John Joe loves him. Um, and and Haddock Stobo should have won last time if not falling. So I think I would play John Bon to be Haddock Stobo. Um, and and hope hope and pray that that Boot Hill is as good as Harry Fry thinks he is. That um, Haddock Stobo is barmy as well. Like that probably would be the one horse to maybe mess the race up a bit and did win really well at. Warwick on, on terrible ground, but classic kind of more horse that just Gary Moore <laughs> cling on for dear life, <laughs> cling on for dear life, and hope he jumps well because he, he does race like a bit of a lunatic. But the times that he's won and when he's in a rhythm and on the front actually could maybe cause a few problems if he's going a real good pace. But like the classy horses won't, you know, won't be a problem for the John Bond, but he might make the race interesting anyway. Right, we've got a national to look forward to. The last race on the card is the London National. And, uh, well, Beauport is in here. And I say caught my eye, certainly when staying at Ascot last time. He's a little bit short, that's all that I thought he would be. Uh, but I've got to stick with him. So he's a massive eye catcher in that one. But, uh, Joel, what gets us out of trouble in the lucky last? Uh, go to Frankie first. Go to Frankie first. I'm just getting a bumpity bump horse come through now. So uh, go <laughs> to Frankie. I'll come back. That, that's the only way you can be excused of <laughs> missing a race is if you uh, have a bumpity bump winner. Um, I'm being really boring in this, but boring sometimes works. And kind of following like trainer form a little bit more this season. And, and when yards are firing, it does pay to stick with them. Um, Fontaine Collonge won a handicap first time out at Haydock on soft ground last year off of one three two. Didn't really do a whole lot since. Races off of 133 this time on soft or heavy ground again and with a £5 claimer on board. 
and Venetia is in good form. So it's pretty boring, but like when Venetia's do get on a roll and if their handicap mark has managed to come back down because they do dip in and out of form, as we know, and with the soft ground forecast, it was too many boxes ticked to ignore. Fontaine Clines then for Frankie. Keep bumpity bump up your sleeve, Joel. What was the London National? Uh, with Venetia as well. Um, you look at her, and it's exactly what Frankie said about just, just keeping with his trainers that are in form uh, at Haydock that day. Uh, you're looking at it, and and the, the ground is perfect for. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why some trainers just come into form at the, uh, at the same time at the same time every year. And once they're in there, you just keep hitting them. There's, there's, you know, we've always talked about Ruth Carr on the flat. She doesn't have a winner for like you know 227 days or something, and then she fires 20 of them in. Uh, it doesn't matter where where they're running, whatever. And I think just just on this one, keep it boring um, with Venetia Williams. I w I am um, I would say this a bit more. Um, what's a bit more. PR safer than Joel Wood. He likes to shout about magic carrots and all the rest of it. But we, we all talk about how Venetia hits, um, you know, good patches of form and on the right ground. It's, it's by no accident. You know, you've, you've got to catch the ones in handicaps right with her because it's it's not all oh, the horses are just running well. You know, they run badly as well. And, and, and when the month does come down, then you've got to strike when they're running well because they are running well because she wants them to run well, not just because she's suddenly in, in a bit of magic form. So uh, I think when you spot one and, and it makes sense, it's worth backing. Well, let's switch from the national from the London Nationals to the National Fences and a couple of races at Aintree we want to look at. And we'll start with the Beecher Chase, of course, 14 runners, three and a quarter mile. Uh, Joel, is this significant that Harry Skelton gives up a couple of rides in grade ones to come and ride Ashtown Lad at Aintree this afternoon? Well, yeah, but I'm trying to get Ashtown Land beaten, uh, and the horse I'm putting up um, has beaten my horse. Uh, it is significant, but um, Harry Skelton does get a lot of stick from many people. But I think he, I think he's mustered around at Aintree. I'm going for uh, Percussion, uh, third in this last year behind Ashtown Land and uh, Gaskill. I think was was in the frame as well there. Um, this Percussion hit, uh, hit a flat spot, two out, stayed on well. It's two pounds lower this year. Uh, the Aintree form is second third and third i believe always stays on well and if we can just get rid of that flat spot like a bit like paisley park does but you know you'll keep you know keep going if we can get that flat spot a little bit a little bit sooner and stay on well i'm really big on percussion this weekend but you know the ashdown lad thing harry skelton he's got a pregnant missus at home uh he's he, he's not even had the kids yet he just wants to get out of the house go to liverpool it's not that it is significant but for a bigger price percussion third in this last year entry form spot on yeah, I thought it was interesting. But yeah, percussion and of course ran really well the other day in the Grand Sefton. Right, Frankie, what was the Beecher chase? I might regret this when this lunatic of a horse falls at the second fence. But the big breakaway is going to be the selection. I mean, you look at what it did last year. It was pulled up in, uh, at Cheltenham and, and finally the National. So <laughs> not the best season last year, but season before second uh, at Haydock and also second in the Welsh National. He's a good horse, but he's got his quirks, he's got his issues, he's got enough Fs and Ps and Us in his form book, but he is an attractive uh, weight and as well as I've just been banging on about training form, Joe's horse well locked up. So I'm going to take a chance on a bit of a mad horse and hope that the big breakaway doesn't fall at the second fence and can actually get around and put in a solid performance. And if I'm allowed two darts, top weight Cocoa Beach for Gordon Elliott. Uh, Danny Gilligan takes off five. This horse seems to be getting better and better. Uh, maybe might even enter kind of grade one status at some point. Um, but with the five pound claimer, I think will also run a good race and has made it round a Grand National before eighth. John Joe road actually um so knows his way around entry uh and could be just a class above there we are it's interesting he comes in and keeps the weights right down yes joel he's got his hand up by the no, way i was gonna say i i the cocoa beach would have been my second one as well um a lot of weight and it's good that danny gilligan's kept the ride because he was brilliant on him last time and uh, and sometimes you know they want to go for like the top showbiz job but leaving the uh, leaving the young lad on who, who was brilliant last time i thought that was great the only thing that put me put me off was the lumps lumps and lumps of weight there but i'm glad the kids got it and that will be my second pick as well coco beach interesting then two ticks for coco beach as well right let's look at the lucky last then the 315 uh, it's a real good handicap hurdle this sonagino is a horse uh, that I do like really consistent tops away from Paul Nichols and Harry Cobden, but it does look a wide open around about four to one the field, Frankie. 
Yep, Sonagino's going to be the pick, which would make it a double for Cobden at entry on the day, if I am right. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just I, I don't mind signing with a top weight horse if they've they, well, they're clearly the best horse because they're top weight in ratings, but um, might just be too good for anything that's well weighted. Uh, did finish third in the two mile four handicap at entry national week as well. Um, third on debut and then fourth in the Great Wood. I know that Iberico Lord form hadn't really worked out at Newbury, but I think that was just a case of the horse bombing out. Um, and I think the Lucia form in that race kind of sets sets that sort of standard. They're horses that are racing at the top of handicaps and rightly so. And I, I think with that entry form, Sonagino is your right favourite and very backable at four to one for a very soft each way bet. I know Joel loves those. <laughs> no, there they're called is. they're called in this day and age. No, no, they're not called soft each way bets. They're called account closers. <laughs> this day and age. Due for business business <laughs> reasons, uh, Mr. Foster, we've decided to close your account and five pound each way on a uh, seven to two shot. So uh, thanks very much. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> Matt, what we each way falls, <laughs> especially uh, the extra I'm places. If you get the extra places, <laughs> I, I think it's worth taking uh, taking another try on uh, Benson here. Um, first, first run of the season was fourth at Carlisle. Was hampered by a faller. Um, when you when you when you, if you're not seeing the race, you're with us in the, in the racing post. You go, hmm. uh, but genuinely, saddle slipped three out. Uh, was hampered by a faller. Uh, William Maggs, who's been running really well, claims a seven now, taking over from uh, Ryan Mania. There was money for this last time. It was definitely fancied. Am I right in thinking it wasn't? It was entered earlier in the week for the fighting fifth as well, about hundred to one. Um, but De but Benson definitely worth uh, another try for me. Uh, I don't know what price price he is, six seven to one, something like that. Um, but Benson to get it, get the money this weekend. So I don't know what price. You can take me off full screen because I've, I've not dyed my beard. <laughs> He's around about eight to one. <laughs> <Get it here. laughs> yeah, around about eight to one. He, he was declared, by the way, for the fight. That's for later. So, yeah. That's, is that for you? Yeah, yeah. Is that for the beard? For later. Yeah, for the later. <laughs> uh, yeah, interesting, Benson. He was well fancy for the Grand National meeting as well, but was uh, a late non-runner. Right, before we get best bets, are we revealing Bumpity Bump's pick? We are five for five, up to about, was it eight to one or something like that? We got the second favourite last weekend, was good. So we're five from five. This is coming this morning. Uh, I have no prices, so you need to go and start looking for a um, Mark, Mike, Matt. Uh, the story so far, Charles Burns horse in the bumper at Navin, 325 tomorrow. Um, it was third at Clomel last time, held up. Um, jockey said it hung left. Uh, it drifted on the day. Not in the, not just in the, uh, in, in the market, but, um, <laughs> but on the track as well. Uh, I think the money will be dead. Well, I don't think I'm passing it on as my own info. Bumpity bump, who's five from five this season. Charles Burns horse in the bumper, uh, 325 Navin. The story so far. There we are then. Can he make it six out of six? Any it's a red hot line. No, no prices as yet. Uh, but well worth keeping on side. Uh, that is for sure. Went off just 130 on its debut. So there you go. Right. That's that one out of the way. Now back to you, Joel, with the nap of the weekend, please. Well, uh, mine's non-ITV race. Uh, Frankie's will go off, uh, no doubt, in the middle of the night at uh, Chartin or wherever he's going. Um, I'm going for Stella Story for Gordon Elliott and Jack Kennedy in the 107 at Navin. Um I, I, I like this horse, first of all, because I keep an eye on anything that's strong related to the Storyteller, which is one of my favourite horses. Landed a few touches with that. Uh, Woolwich Bumper on New Year's Day um, by beating that um, hot shot of, um, of, of, of Mullins. Um, easy win at Navin last month on Hurdle's debut. Uh, just really, really liked it. Again, no prices in as of now. Uh, arguably the best jockey riding anywhere at the minute is Jack Kennedy for Gordon. Stellar story to stay unbeaten. Really like this horse. I think this could be an absolute star. Yeah, around about two to one in that grade two over at Navin. Frankie, are you at home or are you abroad for the nap? I'm home. Spirit Danu, I'm convinced, is a good horse and just didn't run well at Cheltenham because he was too keen first time out. The Moors weren't in good form. It's all going to swing in his favour and he's going to win on Saturday. There we are, Spirit Danu. I do think JPR won. I think we'll take the beat. Uh, slightly... Yeah, I think JPR won, but he's showing off. And I say Beauport, he's just that 
Ascot run, never really got into it. And then was staying on hand over fist at the end and maybe the extra trip will suit him. So yeah, both what he was a late to uh, taken out by the way of the coal the Hennessy last week. Um anything that's shot in, Frankie, that's caught your eye? Horizon door in the Hong Kong Cup. Don't know what a price or if you can bet on it, but uh oh. or who rides be... it or where it's trained or what distance or in the mixer. <laughs> Which stall? <laughs> Mikel, Mikel rides it um, and it runs in the cup and it's going to win Joel that's all we need to know Mikel Joel, first name terms Joel Mikel yeah Mikel 8.40 8.40 UK time yeah yeah have you got what's it what's it called yeah what's it called rising door I'm not running the champion non-runner Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we are then. Up early Sunday morning. Can you get prices? Or... No. no, not yet. No. Well, it's um. And, and in, as well, this is not. This is just me. I'm convinced. Um, Aesop's Fables will win the sprint. I'm. I've been backing that horse since I backed Dan suppose for the guineas. I think. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it's got a good run in. But it ran well in America and in France. I think. Um, good, good, I it's, it's good well, races. I might get up for this. Luxembourg's in there as well for um, Aiden and Ryan. Yeah. Oh, it's a good race, this. He's, he's, got a, he's got a runner in each. He runs Warm Heart as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's sent four or five of them. He's got one in each race. Yeah. He's over there in Yeah, something to get up for. Well, if you're, if you're in any fit state. Yeah, good point. <laughs> it is yeah, the bumpy bump goes in. Yeah, I'll tell I'll tell you now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Seven races covered. We've got a bumper tip as well from the red hot bumper tip bump we've got on Naps. So we've got a little <laughs> bit of chance to look forward to. They are an international feel to this weekend's punters guide. Make sure you join us uh, Monday. We'll look back on the action. Here. And of course, we've got Cheltenham to look forward to next weekend for the next punters guide as well. Yes, Joel. Can I just say, the show is turning into complete shambles. He's in Hong Kong. <laughs> the only stuff we're having is winners in Hong Kong. <laughs> bumper to bumper horses, first time. Wait, no, wait, no, you say it's the shambles, Joel. You say it's the shambles. The winners are going in. Might might be a shambles in terms of our, um, our whereabouts and how we're getting them across. But the winners are going in each week. And it's also, only you. Yeah, no, and, and also you can you can you can tell we've been doing this for a long time now, for at least an hour. Because you look outside, it started when it was light. It's now getting dark in Hong Kong. It is. Oh, it's it. Looking, yeah, it is getting dark. It's a bit dark. Right, right I've, got a, I've got a cocktail party to get to. Oh, right, I'm, sorry, I'm going to Preston to do a charity do. So I'll see you. I'll see you next week. See you Monday for Road to Cheltenham. All right. <laughs> right, boys. Enjoy your weekends. Best of luck with having you back in, and we'll see you next week.